shadows in the mansion. Obsession. Obasi sat in silence, processing the unexpected turn of events. The tension that had knotted his shoulders began to unravel, replaced by an intrigue towards the mysterious figure on his screen. Resolved to uncover the mystery before him. His fingers moved with purpose, rewinding the footage to trace the woman's entry into the mansion. The screens flickered, rolling back the hours, until he found the moment she had crossed into his domain. The camera at the rear entrance captured her first steps inside, hesitant, almost reverent, as if she were stepping into a sacred space rather than a private residence. Obasi watched, captivated by her initial reactions to the surroundings. It was clear from her body language that she bore no malintent. Her intrusion was born of curiosity, perhaps a misdirected adventure or a genuine mistake. His mind racing, Obasi quickly returned to the live footage where she was now walking about and searching each room of his home. The easy decision would have been to call the authorities, to treat her as nothing more than a trespasser. Yet, something about her, the way she moved with awe through the halls, the visible respect she showed for the artifacts and art that adorned his home, made him feel compelled to watch. She navigated the expansive mansion with a cautious grace, her movements deliberate, touching only what was essential as she found her way to the kitchen. Once there, her search began in earnest, a quiet quest driven by an obvious palpable hunger. She started with the refrigerator, pulling its door open only to find it empty, its shelves barren, a testament to its disuse as Obasi preferred to keep it switched off to conserve energy during his absences. Undeterred, she moved on to the cupboards, her hopes briefly lifted, only to be met with the same emptiness. The cupboards, freshly installed, stood pristine and unused, holding nothing but the faint scent of new wood and paint. It was the pantry that finally offered solace to her search. Her movements, already swift with urgency, became frenzied as she discovered a tin of sausages hidden among the sparse supplies. With an almost reverent haste, she tore the tin open, the sound of metal giving way echoing softly in the quiet kitchen. Hunger, sharp and demanding, guided her actions, as without sitting, she consumed the contents with a speed born of necessity, the sausages disappearing as if she were drawing them down in deep, satisfying gulps. This ritual of desperation and relief was repeated five times, each tin found and devoured with the same fervent intensity, until, at last, she reached for a bottle of water. Her hand, now steady with the satiation of her immediate hunger, unscrewed the cap with a calmness that belied the storm of her earlier actions. She drank deeply, the cool water a balm to the fire of her hunger a momentary pause in her unexpected nocturnal odyssey through the mansion. Obasi continued to watch intently, his gaze sharpened by a blend of curiosity and concern. Clearly she was hungry. It was the kind of frantic hunger that spoke of days without proper nourishment. Why so hungry? he muttered softly at the screen. Judging by the worn clothes she shed and those that still clung to her slender frame, his guess was that she was homeless. Observing her further, he noted the clarity in her actions. There was no haze of confusion or the erratic movements often associated with substance abuse. Instead, her actions were deliberate, each one executed with a mindfulness that confirmed she was in full command of her faculties. This wasn't a person lost to addiction, but someone fighting to survive. A wave of sudden concern washed over him, unsettling his composure. Then she left the kitchen. Where are you going? he muttered under his breath, peering intently at the screen as she wandered, seemingly aimless, yet with a purpose only known to her. Her exploration led her to a guest room. Yet, after a brief pause at the threshold, she turned away, seeking something else. What are you looking for? Obasi found himself whispering as she continued her search, moving through the corridors with a quiet determination. Finally, 
she chose the grandeur of his master bedroom. Obasi watched, a silent spectator, as she entered the adjoining bathroom. The sound of running water soon filled the quiet room, and he realized she was taking a shower. When she re-emerged, wrapped in the simple comfort of a towel, she seemed even smaller in it, causing him to wonder if the towel had always been that big. She seemed transformed, if only slightly, less like an intruder caught in the night and more like a guest, albeit one who had arrived under the most unusual circumstances. She found solace in his bed, her exhaustion evident as she quickly succumbed to sleep, a peacefulness settling over her features that Obasi hadn't seen since her arrival. Obasi's initial confusion and apprehension morphed into a deep reflection. Her presence in his home, her journey from the kitchen to the sanctuary of his room, spoke volumes of her current state, alone, vulnerable. Obasi, you're already here? Karen's voice cut through the silence, startling Obasi and prompting him to snap his laptop shut abruptly. Yes, he responded, his tone a mixture of surprise and confusion. I mean, yes. What? Why are you here so late? He asked, momentarily disoriented, not yet aware of the passage of time. Karen, seemingly unfazed by his startled reaction and the slight stumble in his words, offered him a warm smile. I'm just getting started for the day, she said cheerfully, oblivious to the depth of Obasi's preoccupation. It was only then, prompted by Karen's presence and the normalcy she brought with her arrival, that Obasi glanced at the clock. The digits glaring back at him read 8 a.m., a stark indicator that the staff were beginning their day, filtering back into the office. The realization hit him with the weight of a thousand bricks. Had he truly spent the entire night engrossed in watching the woman sleep? Over the next eight hours, Obasi immersed himself in work as usual. Despite the exhaustion clawing at him from a night devoid of sleep, he maintained his composed exterior, revealing no hint of his weariness to those around him. Yet, beneath the surface, his thoughts were in constant turmoil, perpetually drifting back to the image of the young woman resting peacefully in his bed. With each passing minute, he felt an increasing urge to glance at his laptop, to surreptitiously monitor the security cameras. The temptation to keep a watchful eye on her, to ensure she remained undisturbed, was a distraction that tugged at the edges of his focus, blending concern with an inexplicable fascination. The moment the flurry of his responsibilities dwindled and no more directives were demanded of him, Obasi found himself instinctively reaching for his laptop. All employees had now left and night had already come. The art files, usually his sanctuary of focus, lay unopened. His pulse quickened as he navigated back to the feed from the master bedroom's camera. But his heart sank when he found the room empty, the bed devoid of her presence. He leaned forward, fingers deftly manipulating the controls to zoom in, half expecting her to materialise from beneath the voluminous folds of the comforter that had engulfed her slight frame several times last night. Yet, the fabric lay undisturbed, a stark, empty canvas that fueled his anxiety. The realisation that she was truly gone sent a jolt of panic through him, his actions betraying a level of frantic urgency he hadn't anticipated. Where are you? He murmured to himself voice edged with a mixture of confusion and alarm as he rapidly toggled from one camera feed to another. His eyes, wide and searching, darted across the screens, seeking any sign of her. Each empty frame, each quiet corner of his home, displayed on the monitors, amplified his worry. Come on, he whispered desperately. Come on, he said. Where are you? Had she left? The question echoed in his mind, mingling with an unexpected sense of loss. The possibility that she had simply vanished without a trace, leaving no clue behind, was something Obasi found himself unprepared to face. He wouldn't know where to begin searching for her. A sudden, overwhelming impulse seized him, the notion of combing through all of Nigeria to find her. 
the intensity of his reaction surprised him, revealing the depth of his desire for a woman who was, until recently, a stranger. Obasi took a moment to collect himself. Shaking his head to clear the irrational thoughts, he realized he needed a more practical approach. Fortunately, a thorough check confirmed that nothing was missing. The discreet security cameras, seamlessly integrated into each room to monitor the contractors and ensure adherence to his meticulous design specifications, confirmed that every item remained precisely accounted for. With this reassurance, Obasi attempted to redirect his focus back to the art files that demanded his attention. However, it was a futile effort. His mind, unyielding in its wanderings, continuously veered back to the woman. Concerns about her well-being nagged at him incessantly. Was she safe or wandering about on the streets? Was she hungry? Where and what would she eat? Had something in his mansion scared her, prompting her hasty departure? A part of him wondered if involving the police would have been the wiser choice. At least then, if they had apprehended her, he would have known her whereabouts, ensuring she was safe, even if under less than ideal circumstances. With a frustrated grunt, Obasi clutched at his head. Am I losing my grip? He muttered to himself, the question hanging in the air, unanswered. Focus, Obasi, he commanded attempting to marshal his thoughts and regain control. Yet, the attempt was in vain. His mind remained a tumult of concern and confusion, utterly resistant to his efforts. Merely seconds after this internal admonition, he found himself on his feet, driven by an instinctive need for respite. Sleep, he decided, recognizing the futility of his current state. Perhaps distance and rest were what he needed to regain his equilibrium. The notion of returning home and leaving behind the night's events seemed like the perfect solution, a reset button to clear the fog that had settled over his thoughts. With a newfound resolve, albeit one born of desperation rather than conviction, Obasi stepped out the door. Home, sleep and forgetfulness became his mantra a self-prescribed remedy to restore his sanity and wash away the haunting presence of the woman who had unwittingly disrupted his world. The next morning, light filtered through the windows, casting a warm glow over Obasi's office, where the day's work was already underway. Karen entered, her intentions cloaked in a veneer of casual interest, yet every word and gesture was meticulously aimed at drawing Obasi back into a web of rekindled intimacy. She spoke of future plans and the possibility that she might allow him to spend more time with her and that she might let him take her to his mansion. Her voice weaved visions of a life reconnected. However, Obasi was scarcely present in the conversation. His attention was riveted to his laptop, where matters of seemingly greater importance demanded his focus. Karen's presence, once a source of undeniable attraction, now barely registered in his periphery. Her words floated through the air, touching him without truly being heard, as he nodded absent-mindedly, his responses hollow. In the midst of Karen's carefully laid-out plans, Obasi's phone call pierced the orchestrated ambiance. Kalechi, can you check if anything looks strange or out of place? especially around the back door, he asked, a sense of urgency threading through his otherwise calm demeanour. Karen, overhearing the conversation, felt a sudden chill of realisation. Her efforts to ensnare him were evaporating into the ether of his preoccupation. With a quiet sigh, masked by a veneer of indifference, she turned and left the room, her departure unnoticed. Kalechi's subsequent report confirmed the back door was securely locked, an ordinary detail that bore extraordinary significance to Obasi. It was as if she had taken great care to leave no trace, to lock the door behind her, preserving the sanctity of his home. She had moved through his space with consideration, leaving behind only the subtlest signs of her presence, an unmade bed and the absence of sausages. Moved by an impulse he couldn't quite rationalize, Obasi found himself sending a grocery list to Kalechi, 
with instructions to stock the now-to-be-plugged-in refrigerator. The absurdity of his actions dawned on him as he also ordered women's clothing, instructing Kalechi to place them discreetly by the back door in a trash bag, disguised as discarded items. What am I doing? he questioned, a laugh escaping him at the realisation of his own madness. Three days passed without any trace of her, cementing Obasi's belief that their encounter was but a fleeting moment, a beautiful anomaly in the fabric of his life. Yet, he couldn't shake the thought of seeking her out upon his return to Nigeria, her unforgettable eyes haunting him. Life's rhythm resumed its pace, and during a meeting, while his laptop secretly displayed the security feed, Obasi's attention was captured by an unexpected sight. There she was, in the light of day, making herself at home on the edge of his bed. His sudden movement, as he leaned in closer, drew the room's attention. Hastily excusing himself, he retreated to his office, where privacy allowed him to observe her discovery of the stocked fridge. That's when he saw it for the first time. Her smile. It sparked a realisation within him, a vivid reminder of his own vitality. In that instant, the effortless beauty of her grin ignited his virility, stirred it to its peak. There, amidst her perfect, delicate teeth, lay an allure indescribable. Then her joy and impromptu dance filled him with a warm amusement, a smile spreading across his own face for the first time in what felt like forever. For hours, his gaze remained locked on the screen, captivated by her every move. He watched her with a mixture of fascination and longing, reminiscent of someone beholding a rare and exquisite bird confined within a cage. Among the array of garments he had impulsively purchased for her, she chose a dress that seemed to transform her into the living embodiment of the spirit goddess sculpture, her grace and beauty echoing the artistry of the piece. All she needed now was the calabash. Watching her, find a moment of pleasure within the walls of his mansion with the things he had purchased for her and savouring the food he had provided, stirred a newfound sense of protectiveness within him. He realised that, despite the unconventional manner of their encounter, he was now, in some way, her caretaker. Drawn irresistibly, his finger reached out to trace her image on the screen, moving with a tenderness born of a deep yearning, to caress her and stroke her locks. He inhaled deeply, almost believing he could catch the essence of her presence aching for the reality of her touch. You're breathtaking, he breathed. In that moment, the barrier of the digital screen felt like the cruelest of separations, a reminder of the tangible connection he longed to establish. Outside, Karen watched through the glass taken aback by the rare sight of Obasi's genuine happiness. Her curiosity, now piqued, wondered about the source of such unguarded joy. Obasi never smiled. She swept into the room with an urgency uncharacteristic of her usual demeanour, driven by a curiosity to glimpse what he was so intently scrutinising on his screen. Yet, the moment her footsteps echoed near, his head whipped up, and with a swift motion the laptop snapped shut sealing away its secrets. Her inquiries were skillfully parried with smooth, effortless responses, and she withdrew, her curiosity unsatisfied. He reopened the laptop and remained transfixed at his desk, caught in the grip of a fascination that refused to loosen. Her every move was his obsession. A flicker of self-awareness brushed against him, a whisper of caution that he was teetering on the edge of an abyss. His day, once structured and productive, had unravelled, now entirely consumed by the presence of this woman on his screen, in his house. I envy them, he muttered, as jealousy emerged when he considered the world outside that could interact with her, could touch her yet mistreated her, while he remained a ghost behind glass. A flicker of movement on one of the camera feeds caught Obasi's peripheral vision, drawing his full attention. He quickly refocused, his brows knitting together in a mix of shock and bewilderment. It was Kalechi, 
moving stealthily through the mansion's back door, knife in hand, as if on a mission to locate the intruder. Meanwhile, the woman, blissfully unaware of the impending danger, was emerging from the bathroom. Obasi's reaction was immediate. He snatched up his phone, fingers flying over the keypad with urgent speed. Yet, though the ringing filled his ear, it became apparent that Kalechi was unreachable, his phone evidently not on him. A string of curses escaped Obasi's lips, his heart pounding against his chest as Kalechi advanced, step by stealthy step, toward the woman's location. As Kalechi's steps halted at the master bedroom, the ensuing chaos unfolded in mere seconds. The woman's scream pierced the air briefly before Kalechi was upon her, her slight frame easily subdued and forced to the ground. The knife in his hand glinted menacingly as it descended. No! Obasi's voice erupted in terror, the sound resonating through the office, drawing startled looks from his colleagues. His chair crashed backward as he stood abruptly, eyes wide with horror witnessing the nightmare unfold on the screen. The woman struggled valiantly, but she was no match for Kalechi's brute strength. No, no, she's just a girl, Kalechi, what are you doing? Obasi pleaded to the screen, his voice laced with desperation. Any fleeting hope that Kalechi would recognize her harmlessness dissipated as he saw the young woman being hurled across the room, her head striking the wall with a sickening crack. I have to get there, he gasped, voice trembling, body shaking with a mix of fear and rage. He became a whirlwind of action, darting through the office, making frantic phone calls and speeding toward his private jet with a singular focus. Aboard the plane, Obasi prayed fervently for the woman's survival, his pleas a silent roar in the confined space. The knowledge that Kalechi had dragged her out of sight, beyond the view of the cameras, twisted his heart with dread. He tossed the laptop aside, pacing the cabin as the plane seemed to inch through the sky, his mind racing with thoughts of landing directly atop the mansion if only it were possible. 